In today's video, I'm going to show you things you can see and do in Brighton, England in 24 hours. Brighton is known for its vibrant art scene, historical landmarks, and miles of pebbled beaches. This city has a ton of energy and a spirit of freedom and fun. If you've been to San Francisco in the US, this place can easily be referenced as the smaller scale San Francisco of England, and it's a little over an hour train ride south of London. From eating a traditional English breakfast to a leisurely afternoon tea, from exploring the Royal Pavilion to wandering through the quirky shops of North Lane, we'll be discovering Brighton in all its colors. What better way to start the day than diving into a traditional full English breakfast at a popular spot called Bill's Brighton Restaurant. This typical breakfast is traced back to the 1300s and includes bacon, sausage, eggs, tomatoes, mushrooms, toast, and if you dare, black pudding, which is made from pork or beef blood. And of course, a proper black English tea with a splash of milk and a sugar cube. Just the meal needed to fuel up for a day of Brighton explorations. Just a couple blocks away from Bill's, I head over to North Lane, a maze of narrow lanes lined with independent shops and boutiques. North Lane is a vibrant testament to Brighton's creative spirit. Here you'll find everything from vintage treasures to cutting edge fashion, from funky homeware to local art. But North Lane isn't just about shopping. It's also a haven for foodies and coffee lovers where you'll find artisan coffee and delicious pastries. This is a great place to shop souvenirs and bring home the famous Brighton Rock Candy. This is a must see to immerse yourself and feel the soul of Brighton. Nestled in the heart of Brighton, you'll find the beautifully architected Royal Pavilion. It was built in 1787 for King George IV and was sold to Brighton in 1845 by Queen Victoria. Step inside and you'll be transported to a world of lavish, oriental-inspired interiors. Each room is boasting of intricate details and grand designs. The pavilion is surrounded by beautifully designed gardens that take you out of the city's bustle. Brighton in all its uniqueness, of course it has an upside down house. Right on the Brighton seafront, this place has become a must visit, Instagram friendly attraction. This house is the second to follow the first upside down house in Bournemouth, South England. It was built specifically to be a tourist attraction, and after the massive success there, the one in Brighton was built and completed in 2019. The bandstand, located right on the Brighton seafront, is a great place to get some photographs. The bandstand, often referred to as the birdcage, is an intricate ironwork and classic Victorian design that was built in 1884. It was originally used for military band concerts, but today it hosts events from weddings to concerts with beautiful seafront views. Rising above the vibrant city and offering panoramic views as far as the eye can see, meet the British Airways I-360. This vertical pier earned the title of the world's tallest moving observation tower and the slimmest, which landed in the Guinness Book of World Records. It has a bar, restaurant, and extreme activities like the Skywalk. From this bird's eye view, take in the views of the city and the sea, and on a clear day, apparently you can see all the way to Isle of Wight, which is almost 50 miles away. Next up is the beating heart of Brighton, the iconic Brighton Palace Pier. The pier was built in 1899 and stretches out 1,700 feet into the English Channel that offers attractions for all ages. It's the most popular attraction outside of London, bringing in over 4 million visitors each year. This pier survived two world wars, several storms, and still remains the number one attraction in the city. There are six different fairground rides, an extensive arcade, and plenty of junk food. One of my favorite ways to explore a city is by bike, and Brighton is the perfect place for that. There are bike rental stations scattered all around the city called BTN Bikes, using their pay-as-you-go plan. You'll have to download the app and set up a payment method, but then you're on your way. The city's dedicated bike path runs parallel to the coastline, offering views of Brighton's beachfront and English Channel. I spent a couple hours biking along the path from the colorful Hove Beach Huts all the way to the marina, seeing eye-catching things along the way. 
as I venture west on my bike, I find myself at the iconic Hove Beach Huts. There's about 500 houses that serve a functional purpose. People can rent them, live in them, and use them as a place for their family to relax. Each beach hut carries its own personal touch, from names inscribed on the doors to charming decorations, and they sell today for about $30,000. One of the first things I do when going to the UK is getting traditional British afternoon tea. This midday meal dates back to 1840 and was made popular by Queen Victoria's friend who got hungry between lunch and the late dinners that they typically had, and it turned into an upper class social event for elites. Today you can find places that serve afternoon tea on almost every corner, which has a variety of finely cut sandwiches, warm scones with clotted cream and jam, and a range of pastries and cakes. All right, travelers, so that's my recap of 24 hours in Brighton. From the historic charm of the Royal Pavilion to the quirky upside down house, every moment has been an eventful discovery. This place is a great escape from the hectic and expensive city of London, whether you're on a long layover or want to do a day trip while visiting London. Brighton has been a joyous blend of the eclectic and the elegant, the modern and the historic, a city that dances to its own beat and invites you to join the celebration. So thank you so much for watching, and if you're planning a trip to Brighton, don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments below as I've been there a handful of times. So until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and remember, life's too short to not enjoy a good cup of tea by the sea.